Close your eyes, focus on your breath. Try to notice how long the breath is when it comes in, how long it is when it goes out. Notice it at the nose, you can notice it at the throat, in your chest. And then notice how the feeling feels. Is it a comfortable feeling or is it uncomfortable? If it's uncomfortable, you can change. There are all kinds of comfortable ways to breathe. And it's a real shame if you don't breathe comfortably, because it's something that's free. You don't have to ask this happiness or this pleasure from anyone else. It's something you can create for yourself. And when you breathe in a comfortable way like this, okay, then the mind is in a much better position to look at itself and to look at the world around it. Say, okay, what's important here? What can I really rely on? We chatted just now that we're taking refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. What does that mean? Well, we take them as our examples. You learn about the Buddha, you learn about what kind of life he had, what kind of person he was. You learn about the Dharma that he taught, the truths that he taught, and you learn about the Sangha, the people who practiced his truths and gained awakening just like he did. And you say, that's a good example. I'm going to follow that example. That sounds like a really good way to become happy. And so then you try to develop the same qualities he had. Like right now, we're developing mindfulness and alertness, concentration. All kinds of good qualities of the mind get developed when you focus on one thing like this and stick with it. And when these, we develop these qualities, then they become our refuge. We find that we want happiness here, and we don't have to be so hungry to look for happiness outside. Because what happens is when you're hungry for happiness outside, you end up being disappointed. When you're disappointed, you start getting angry. You start saying things and doing things that you're later going to regret. But if you're coming from a position of well-being inside, then you're a lot less likely to say harmful things. And this is why they say that a person who respects the Dharma, a person who protects the Dharma, gets protected by the Dharma. In other words, if you look after your precepts, like the precepts with Janet just now, you look after the quality of your mind in line with the Dharma, then that will protect you. You won't cause all the kind of harm to yourself and other people that you would cause otherwise. And so this is a good protection for the mind. You're learning how to train it like this. So it's less likely to speak out of anger, speak out of greed, speak out of fear, or act out of these things, like speaking out of anger. The Buddha has you reflect that when you're angry, suppose you're angry at somebody and you start saying things on the out of the anger, well, if that person doesn't like you, they'll be pleased to see that you're angry. It gives them satisfaction, because you end up saying stupid things. You look ugly when you're angry. You say things that you harm yourself later. Your good reputation gets harmed. The people who used to like you don't like you as much anymore. Sometimes you're, you th what think is, you think is going to be to your advantage is not to your advantage at all. And then, so you say and do things that actually harm yourself. And that, that's what I said. This kind of thing gives satisfaction to your enemy. Do you want to satisfy your enemy in that way? Well, no. Then you learn how to keep your anger under control. This is the first level of defense. The next level is then you start having goodwill. Goodwill for yourself, I don't harm yourself, and then goodwill for the other person. You realize that other person, that other person is not totally evil. They've got good things. You have to learn how to appreciate their good things so that you don't just focus on their anger. And why are you doing this? You're doing this to protect yourself from doing or saying or thinking things that are later going to harm you. So the Buddha has all sorts of ways of giving you protection. This is what the Dharma is all about. It's about protection. We, th we tend to think about dangers outside as being the big problem, but it was the dangers inside that really cause most of the harm in our lives, the dangers in the mind that we act on. So by learning to train the mind like this, we're getting some protection from those dangers. In this way, the refuge of the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha becomes a refuge inside of us that we can take with us wherever we go.